十几 volunteers in Taiwan mobilized to help a family clean up after a fire tore through their home. Sushi volunteers in Indonesia hold a beam raising ceremony for the Jingsu Hall in Batam. Welcome to Dawa Headlines. I'm Mary Lee Shioda. Thank you for joining us. Early morning on November 19th, a fire broke out in a residential building in New Taipei City's Banqiao District, leaving one dead and one injured. After getting notified about the disaster, some city volunteers went to the hospital to care for the injured, while others were mobilized to clean up the home. As the fire burned everything in the living room and the balcony on the fourth floor of this apartment's building, city volunteers came to help clean up. With many people working together, we won't need to put a lot of effort doing the cleaning work, and it will be more effective to clear out all the waste. On November 19th, a fire broke out in this residential building in Banqiao, New Taipei. Unfortunately, the accidents result in one death and one injury. After hearing the news, Ciji volunteers headed to the hospital to care for the survivor. On the next day, Ciji also mobilized volunteers to help this family's home. Ziji informed us about this cleanup at 2 p.m. And at 3 p.m., Ziji brothers and sisters who had free time all gathered and came to help out. I think there were around 40 or 50 people. Ziji brothers and sisters came to help the residents in this community overcome this difficult situation. I am moved by all of this. Ziji always brings warmth and love to people. Like this case, they all came to help right after they received the news. We'd like to express gratitude for Ziji's assistance on behalf of the victims. Because two floors were involved in the blaze, Ziji mobilized many volunteers to help clear out the waste items. I am moved because Ziji volunteers came here to help us clean up in the early morning. I thank you, Ziji brothers and sisters. Apart from comforting this fire survivor with love, volunteers also encourage her family to bravely face their future as well as rebuild their homes. As the Ziji Philippines chapter will distribute the rice from Taiwan to the poor in Tacloban City in December of this year, volunteers divided into different groups to conduct home visits prior to the event. They visited more than 2,000 families during a five-day trip, with some 1,700 families qualified to receive the rice. Ziji volunteers are taking different routes to make home visits prior to an upcoming rice distribution. We conducted home visitations today because we're going to host a rice distribution next month. We'd like to get a better understanding of local residents' living conditions prior to the event. As Typhoon Haiyan brought great damage to this deprived region near the sea, local residents used woodboards and schist meadows to rebuild their homes. Jasmine and her three children rely on her husband's meager income to live. My husband works three days a week. We don't have our own room. We have to go near the sea when we need to use the toilet. After Apple conducted home visits along with her mother, she witnessed how impoverished her community is. I feel great. It is a great experience making home visits with a group of volunteers because I got to know different living conditions of the residents in this community. The weather in Tacloban City is unstable as sometimes it is sunny while other times it is rainy. As rice from Taiwan will soon be delivered to Tacloban City for the rice distribution, volunteers continue to visit each family and record their living conditions. Staying in the Philippines, Siji volunteers recently paid a monthly visit to some care recipients from disadvantaged backgrounds, including a disabled infant girl and 14-year-old Christian Carl Paltazar, who suffers from chronic kidney disease. Volunteers provided medical subsidies for both families, hoping to help them overcome such difficult conditions. 
Unlike other children who are energetic and lively, 14-year-old Christian can only stay at home watching TV because his health condition is getting worse after he was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease six years ago. He has to undergo dialysis every day to stay alive. I have to do dialysis on my own. After cleaning the tube and my wounds, I pour medication into the tube to metabolize toxins in my kidney's fluid. Though Christian's mother stitches meds every day to support the family, they are still unable to afford the medical expense of a kidney transplant. We need a lot of money to cure his illness, so sometimes we have to use our money for food to buy his medication. Zizi volunteers have long cared for this family by providing them rice and medication each month, hoping to help Christian overcome his difficult situation. Meanwhile, a disabled infant girl who lives in Takloban city also needs Zizi's assistance. Volunteers started to care for her family after her father joined the cash for relief work program in the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan. I have decided to be a part of Tsuji and devote my time to helping the needy because this charity organization has helped us a lot, which helped my daughter to stay fed. Now Susan collects plastic bottles as a way to pay back Tsuji. Her dedication has moved many people. Tsuji volunteer Jamie Guo has been deeply moved by Susan's good deeds. He has brought his grandchildren to visit her family. I can see that their house is unsafe and they need some food to eat. My grandfather hopes that we can understand the needs of the less fortunate. Learning from experiences like this, anyone can help to make society full of kindness and love by helping each other and learning to reciprocate. The WHO Regional Office for Southeast Asia organized a regional workshop on healthcare waste management in Kathmandu, Nepal, and Dalin Siji Hospital has been invited to share its experience. The hospital deputy superintendent not only shared the hospital's experience in reducing and recycling medical waste, he also introduced eco-friendly products to the other workshop attendees. And also I would like to Dalin Tsuji Hospital has been invited by Healthcare Without Harm to attend regional workshop on healthcare waste management held in Kathmandu, Nepal. Since we have good connection with Healthcare Without Harm, who is one of the workshop participants, they have invited us to share our experiences in processing medical waste and reducing environmental footprints. While processing medical waste takes extra effort, Daling Tsuji Hospital has won many awards in Taiwan for its work in reducing and recycling medical waste. Therefore, the hospital ceases this occasion to introduce eco-friendly products produced by Da Ai Technology to the other workshop attendees. Tsuji's medical facilities have put in much effort in managing medical waste. In addition, they have the support of Dai technology. Therefore, in recent years, we have received positive feedback in similar conferences around the world. Through sharing its medical waste management experiences at the workshop, Daling Tsuji Hospital hopes to help promote environmental health in Nepal and other countries in Southeast Asia. Municipal animal shelters around Taiwan already have limited space, and in February next year, with the implementation of zero euthanasia policy, more pressure will be put on these facilities. Although private shelters are willing to continue taking over this care, without strengthening education at the source of the problem, this new zero euthanasia policy could just exacerbate existing problems in managing stray animals. On February 2017, Taiwan is about to enter an era when municipal animal shelters will implement zero euthanasia. According to the new laws and regulations, each dog must be given an area equivalent to five square meters. This base area includes the area of the cage, a recreation area, as well as a public area. 
At present, municipal animal shelters and shelters in various cities and counties have already reached full capacity. Jai City has even reached a level of 193 percent of capacity. In Shinju County, Miaoli County, Tainan City, and Ilan County also exceeded 100 percent capacity. With the capacity of public shelters being limited as well as private shelters, we must return to the fundamental problem of controlling and managing the source of stray dogs. <laughs> source management, of course, is easier said than done as the responsibility primarily rests in the owner of the pet. With public shelters full, dogs and cats have been sent to private shelters as one solution. According to data from the Council of Agriculture, Jai County has the highest percentage of animals in private shelters, with more than 70 percent, followed by Penghu County and Yunlin County, which stand at more than 50 percent, with Taoyuan City and Jai City also having a high ratio. The ITV is here at this private shelter, which may surprise people, as there are more than 800 dogs located here. Many are curious how the leader of this operation, Mrs. Xu, decided to start this shelter. We started an animal welfare organization, and then we solicited donations from the community to help us become sustainable. Each dog is given a name upon entering the shelter, and when they see the founder of the shelter arrive, they all come running over. Over the past two months, whether it's stray dogs on the road, or those in shelters, or those that have been abandoned, I feel that there are more and more. Originally, Xu Wenhui and her brother wanted to go into animal welfare services, but their particular association also operated two parks, which had up to 2,800 dogs. To take care of these dogs, which face euthanasia or being abandoned, a sparsely populated area was found, with a monthly cost of 78,000 U.S. dollars. Sometimes you may see a dog that is about to be euthanized, and if I can just use a little of my ability to help, we will do it. We currently receive dogs from the Xingwu Shelter, Zhubei Shelter, Tainan's Wanli Shelter, Shanghua Shelter, and Jiayi's Mingsheng Shelter, along with a Pingdong Shelter. In fact, the dogs from the shelters are the ones that people don't want, but if they can perform well, they are definitely okay. On the one hand, actively training dogs can increase the adoption rate, while on the other hand, her brother is still actively trying to rescue dogs. Many of these rescued dogs need long-term care, and even some need to reside in the intensive care unit. What the government can't do, private organizations may be willing to take over, but this is not a permanent solution. What needs to be done is more public education at the source of this issue. In fact, having feelings for others is important, as some of these animals are old and have been dependent on their owners for a long time, and then they are just discarded. There are so many dogs in shelters that face euthanasia, which I believe is a very cruel thing. Shelters should not be the place where pets are put at the end of their life, with the zero euthanasia policy potentially helping them. But this may mean that they are just sentenced to life in prison. While improving policies treating these animals is a step in the right direction, more thoughtful and caring supporting measures are still needed. In Indonesia, the Jing Hall in Batam is nearing completion, which marks the second spiritual home in the country. As the hall is closer to Singapore, it can also serve as a cultivation ground for them as well. Together, everyone looks forward to the final completion of this building. In Indonesia, the Jing Hall in Batam is holding a beam-raising ceremony. <laughs> After Aging Sahal was established in Jakarta, Siji volunteers in Indonesia worked towards building a second spiritual home. Besides the Jing Si Hall in Jakarta, Batam Island hosts the second Jing Si Hall in our country. It is also close to Singapore, which can help bring our Dharma family closer together, so our path is straighter and smoother. The Tsuji Batan Liaison Office was established in August of 2005. In the past 10 years of building Tsuji's mission, no one is happier than the person in charge, Diane Lo, to welcome their own official Jing Si Hall. 
I have to set a good example for others, and of course I work hard to coordinate everything. It was mindful and more mindfulness to ensure that everything is done well and complete. The construction for the Jinsu Hall began in June of last year, and the construction ran smoothly. A beam raising ceremony was held as the main structure is nearly complete. With the volunteers handing over the blessing and wisdom locks, all wish for the remaining construction to go as planned. The master wants Batam to work together in harmony. Now that we have our own Jingsa Hall, perhaps it can help us recruit more Bodhisattva to join us. After cutting into Indonesian ceremonial food, volunteers also perform a drum and bell set to send blessings. Together, everyone looks forward to the completion of their new spiritual home. Back in Taiwan, continuing her island-wide trip, Master Zhen Yan has arrived in Tainan. At the Year and Blessing Ceremony there, she encouraged everyone to be mindful and expressed her concern for those affected by the recent earthquake that struck Japan's Honshu Island. <laughs> After Tsuji volunteers put on a sutra adaptation, Master Jing Yin commends volunteers in Tainan and shows her concern for the earthquake that just struck Japan. Looking back at the past year, natural disasters have taken place frequently around the world. Besides praising such volunteers for spreading love around the world, the master also encourages the newly certified volunteers to be mindful. I kept crying since the moment I saw the master. I will move forward diligently on the Tsuji Bodhisattva path. She vows to follow in the master's footsteps and remain steadfast on the Bodhisattva path. In total, 78 volunteers in Tainan have been certified this year. Among them is Zhen Ruiping, who has served at the news department of the ITV for 18 years. When the February 6th earthquake struck, Chen, who lives near the disaster area, rushed to the scene and was deeply moved by what he saw. At the disaster site, I saw rescue workers and Ziji brothers and sisters, so I was deeply moved. Being certified as Ziji volunteer, Chen feels a sense of mission and honor. He vows to work with other volunteers to carry out Ziji's missions and spread love to those in need. When 75-year-old Yang Jiaxiong of Tainan was younger, he used to drink alcohol as part of his business affairs. Upon a trip to Tsuji's spiritual home in Hualien 18 years ago, he realized a better use of his time and began picking up glass bottles for recycling instead. Besides separating glass bottles by color for recycling, what else is there to know? Yang Jiaxiong from Tainan spent four years finding out. <laughs> While doing glass bottle recycling, I realized the true meaning of always being mindful. Mindfully doing the job and not mindfully doing the job makes a difference. After doing this for four years, these glass bottles are in demand. These heavy and fragile glass bottles are sorted not only by color, but after rinsing them out, he also sorts them by size. It's this extra effort that makes the recycling buyers like purchasing glass bottles from him. In the past, when I encountered a situation where it's not to my liking, my temper would immediately flare up. Now I always take a moment to think about the situation and hesitate. After accepting the Master's please always be mindful as part of my life, I give in to anger less often. Not only changing his temperament, Yang also puts time in as a medical volunteer. 
Having once been in the hospital for surgery, he knows the pain and discomfort of staying at a hospital. Thus, he makes time to visit patients to perform and entertain them. Seeing the patients forget their suffering is the best reward for Yang Jiaxiong. In our next report, we will introduce a Tsuji volunteer in Malaysia who has dedicated her time to Tsuji's education mission despite being plagued by cancer. After she passed away at the age of 52 in November, a memorial ceremony was held on her behalf, where all those present recalled her dedication and passion for life. Ding Sui Ching, a volunteer dedicated to Tsuji's education mission, suffered from breast cancer, uterine cancer, and bone cancer over the course of 12 years. Despite her illnesses, she persevered with volunteering for 10 years before her passing. After Ding passed away at the age of 52, her family and Dharma family still remember her as a gentle yet strong fighter. I heard that later on she was often in and out of the hospital. Nevertheless, she never gave up on opportunities to serve others. Whenever our education team held activities and asked her to help out, she was always there, forming good affinities with everyone. Din's footprints in life are displayed in a slideshow at the memorial ceremony for everyone to learn from her passion for life. I have vowed to walk the Bodhisattva path life after life. I feel that I'm just taking a break for now so I can continue a longer journey in the future. Din's dedication and passion for life have also become an encouragement for her family and friends. I'm making a great vow today to join Zuji for sure. Din has passed away following the natural course of life. However, she has lived with love and passion that inspire and brighten the lives of those who know her. Tsuji's youth basketball team in Hualien visited students of the Shuiyuan tribal village to play a friendly game of three-on-three. Three. Not only do these activities bring some outside influences to Shuiyuan, but it also teaches all those involved about love and care. Driving to Hualien Shuiyuan Tribal Village, Hualien Tsuji Youth Basketball Tsuji University Division is inviting youngsters to come out and play. <laughs> While taking the children to the activity center, the coach always has an ear to lend. If they are having problems with their peers, they'll tell me or share with me what's going on in their life. <laughs> the tribal children lead the college students to Shuiyuan Activity Center to play a game of three-on-three. I didn't like basketball before, but after coming into contact with it, I was interested. So I've continued to participate. They live in a more remote region, and their equipment might not be so complete, but they still value each, and every time we come to play games with them. The Tsuji youth basketball team doesn't only want to teach the team members ball skills, but it also helps build their character, bringing a positive influence to society. To safeguard the health of seniors in Hualien's Zhuhe District, Mennonite Christian Hospital hosted a free clinic for the elderly. This medical outreach saved the seniors the trouble of making the trip to the hospital. We will leave you with these images at the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.